And, um, you know, along the way, my barber told me one day, he was like, you know, your hair has actually started to lock up, you know, so it, you're not even going to be able to comb some of these out. So I don't know what you want to do from here on out. So I was like, well, let me just keep growing it. <laughs> Oh. And here we are, you know, so my hair was like super curled up and like tangled. So I decided to try to comb it out the other day. And now I'm just dealing with a whole bunch of like getting it back to like where it was a lot of shrinkage, you know, black people, you know, curly hair experience. problems, you know, the black oh. experience. So. I mean, I feel you because my yes. hair's been in a bun for about a week now. Uh -huh. like in braids. So I have to comb it today and I'm <laughs> avoiding it. Uh huh. I just keep putting product on pro top of product, and I'm like, this uh -huh. is gonna be a mess. It's gonna be a few yes. hours worth of um, worth of work. Yeah. Be black, and this yeah. isn't even that. It's just long. It's just yeah. long. So it just it's beautiful though. Little dreads. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. And so I'm like, so how I'm are you? Do with my edges this morning. I'm gonna deal with this. I had a baby puking on me, so I'm good. How are you? Yeah. How's California? I'm good. I'm good. I mean, yesterday was a good day. Because it was okay. Whitney Houston's birthday. Oh my so goodness, I listened to yes. a lot of Whitney Houston. Oh, uh, Whitney. And she filled my soul. And it kind of like raised my vibration back up. As always. Like As literally Houston. always. Like her music always does that to me. Like my boyfriend will listen to Whitney's music and be like, sometimes it puts him in like a, a too somber mood and like kind of a depressed mood just because her, her songs are heavy, you know? But yeah. like, I just, I always love it. Always love it. So. I mean... I, I love, I love Whitney. Like, yeah, I sing Whitney all the time, and I've, yep. I've just like that voice. Nobody will ever match that voice and that quality and that and her passion and the impact she made on the community. Like, I still yeah. don't even think she gets as much enough credit for really what she produced. I think people like her, but then I think all of the stuff that went on in her personal life, people it takes away for some people from her music. And I'm like, no, she's still the best. Yeah. She's still the best. And I agree. Still an angel. Whitney so, Houston is the, the greatest of all time. She the is the voice of all time. Her voice is mother earth. You know, like it just, it, it, it will never be another person, one like her. The only person I want to hear sing the national anthem. The only person at this moment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't really want to hear anybody. Exactly. I, I, text you, I just turned down a big national anthem. Um, Literally. I, I turned it down, and as I turned it down, I'm like, we are in a pandemic, and that is money. Yeah. But, no, I can't If it do doesn't it. sit right, it doesn't sit right, you know? It doesn't sit right. And I was like, y'all should just play Whitney. Just play her recording, and just yeah. let that live. Yes. But how yes. are you doing? How have you been since? Doing good. Um, it's release week, I guess. So, song yes. came out on Friday, a new single, Drake that we wrote together. Um, it's the second song off of my upcoming EP, Summer Tape. Um, so I was super excited to, to get it out. And we wrote it in February. So I love, you know, putting songs out super quick. You know, like yes. some of the songs on the EP were literally written a year ago, you know, but mm -hmm. I love that Drake is so fresh, you know, and so just in the moment and um, that it's getting to be heard. So just I, running off of that still, you know, running I off of that. And me and you've written quite a few songs and more to come but this is yeah. for sure my one of my favorite songs I've ever written and Same. I knew it in that moment I was like Same. should we have I a little listening in, party like we're gonna write a song about Degrassi and I was like what, <laughs> what are let's we have a little about? listening party to the song and then yes. let's tell them tell everyone you know how it was written um, yes. all that stuff let's yes see. I have my speakers on in the back they should be loud enough to hear they should be Everybody listen. Can you hear that? Yes, hear it good. I guess I'll sing along with it too. Hey, 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 come on. Aubrey Graham's been the man ever since I was 10. I will never comprehend all this iconic shit. I can remember the day you got shot. The gun went off. Fuck that nigga Rick. <laughs> Hey, I'm so grateful for Drake, uh, cause he got up that wheelchair and showed me I could be anything. I'm so thankful for Jimmy, yeah, and Hotline Bling, 
Damn that nigga show me the way. I'm so grateful for Drake. Yeah. I'm so grateful for. I'm so grateful for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. After you drop that album, girls love Drake. Yeah, they can't live without him. Say his name, say his, say his name. name. Love to wear it out, yeah. Then they turn around and uh, Jay Z. Cause he got up that wheel shit. Show me I could be anything. I'm so thankful for Jimmy. Yeah. And Hotline Blade. Then a nigga show me the way. I'm so grateful for Dre. I'm so grateful for. I'm so grateful for. I'm so grateful for Dre. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm so thankful for Marvin's room, views, passion fruit, take care, takes me there. I'm so grateful for Drake, Drake. I'm so thankful for Marvin's room, views, passion fruit, take care, takes me there. I'm so grateful for Drake, Drake. I'm so grateful for Trey. I'm so grateful for Trey. Got out that wheelchair. Show me I could be anything. I'm so thankful for Jimmy. Yeah. Hotline bling. I'm so grateful for Trey. Yeah. I'm so grateful for. I'm so grateful for. I'm so grateful for Trey. 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 Yeah. Woo! Yeah! 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 Man, so that song was written right here. Honestly, in this I room know. that you see, this is my studio living room. Um, I started writing it the day before we got together. So I started writing it here on the couch, honestly. I was in the midst of writing this Degrassi Degrassi mixtape. So I've always loved Degrassi since I was a kid. Obviously, that's how I was introduced to Drake, you know, Aubrey Graham, who he was at the time, you know, and so I just I kind of was in this mode. I didn't really it's it's not that I had anything to write about. I think I was in this time of like writing super heavy stuff. And I really just yeah. needed like a muse that wasn't necessarily me, but something that I could connect to and just write about and have fun, you know, so like that's where Drake was born out of, you know, and I think but right before that, I had seen this video of him, you know, getting booed too um, off a stage at like Tyler, the Creator's music festival. And when I saw that video, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, like people, that's how they are with big stars, though. Like people <laughs> pump you up. They want you to get huge, you know, and then you become an icon, you become a legend, you know, then everybody wants to talk their shit about you, you know, and I'm just like, you're not about to do that about Drake. Like you can say what you want about Drake. Like you can say his songs sound the same. You can say what every, but the dude is consistent. You know, yes. that's the thing. Like everyone has had a Drake song touch them in their life. Honestly, even mm -hmm. like people that don't even listen to rap music, like Hotline Bling, it's a huge pop song. You yeah. know, like that, you heard that song, you sung it, you liked it, come on. You know, so it's like, don't hate on Drake, you know? So that's the whole point of this song is just, no one's really done a tribute song to Drake, you know? So I was like, why don't we just fill the space and do it? So. Here we are, and it's out, and you know, I'm promoing it, trying to get it on TikTok to blow up so Drake can hear it. Um, so Drake can hear it, and hopefully Drake can be on it. So that would be um, the dream. I think he will. I, I think, think he will. will. I think he's definitely I, gonna hear it. I, I just have a feeling in my spirit, and, so. And the energy of it, I think, what I love yeah. about writing It's just good vibes, you know? If you don't know anything about Drake, or you didn't watch the show, or you didn't do that, you can still love it's the record. It's still an upbeat song. It's, it's just, just like, I don't song. even know what this is saying, but it's like making me smile, you know? And I think that's been like the main response from people so far, which is I love because I, I wanted this EP to be, you know, upbeat, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I was talking to my agent right before I released it, you know, because it's been in the works for a while, you know, but then we were at the top of the summer and the world was just in disarray, you know? And yeah. it's like, do people want this type of music? You know, like, I don't know. And, you know, my agent's like, John, your music, you know, this this EP provides such an escape, you know, mm -hmm. and even though it's talking about a great summer, because the EP really tells the story of my of last summer, you know, mm -hmm. which was a great fun summer, you know, my second year living in Nashville, you know, and 
but it's a year later, you know, and that's how a lot of music is with artists and stuff. It's like we write it. We got to put all this time into it. We got to make the record. We got to get the release ready. You know, we got to yeah. get the project ready. You know, then it rolls out pretty much a year later, you know. Yeah. So um, I'm glad that it's just making people smile, you know, and there are other songs on the project that are just going to make people smile and think on better times, you know, and when things are back to normal, like people mm -hmm. can continue to live with the record can continue to have a good time, you know, and that's what I'm excited about, so. Well, what I love about this record, and I've heard the whole thing, I think mm -hmm. you, first of all, I think you should be releasing whatever your heart feels, because yeah. in the time of the two pandemics, the racial pandemic and COVID, you're still a black man living in Nashville, which is a predominantly white town, in yeah. a music world that's very- With very racist country. roots, literally, racist Confederate roots, roots yeah. So you, have the right to sh showcase joy like yeah. that is your right and that yeah. is what people need to see from you because a lot of times they don't see black men really literally that is joy literally and they're I'm so like, used to just hearing us sing about you know f this f that you know where's the guns that where's the drugs that you know it because that's where that's what they they're comfortable with us singing you know mm -hmm. because that's honestly their you know that's what they think of us Sadly, yeah. you know, so it's like showing them joyful. something different, showing them the alternative, you know, that mm -hmm. there, there is no one black experience, you know, like there are many, you know, and they are, some of them are LGBT, you know, some of yeah. them are, you know, women who deal with the most shit in the world, black women, you know, so it's just like, we have to tell those stories, you know? Yeah. And I think this, I love Drake. I love the first single too, Vacation. And I think, yeah that while it's important to release the heavy songs and the honest songs, which I have them. all we are like, <laughs> exactly. We don't always have to speak on our struggles. We can speak yeah. on our joys too. Because like, black joy is, is one of the most beautiful things in the world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are expecting a lot of songs that are about race and about these things because they are coming from an honest place from us. From black well, we've been people. living that our whole lives. Yeah, but I'm like, if you, you know? look through like black music catalogs, like they've that's what we've been speaking on. So let's bring some light into this. Let's bring some light into this conversation. Let's bring yeah. some happiness. And even when people think about Drake, a lot of times they think they don't always think happy. And I'm like, Drake's dope. Like, yeah, Drake I mean, Drake happy. is in his feels like all the time, but. <laughs> it's it's to a good beat you know like that's and that's something i think that i take from drake in my music and mm -hmm. you know listening to my music more and more I, I actually realize that you know i do take a lot from him you know mm -hmm. like a lot of inspiration and i love that you know but his music it can be a sad subject or an emotional subject you know but the beat is always like you know upbeat yeah. like and that's just how my stuff is like I like contrasting feels, you know, in music, so. Yeah, and he always, he also always uplifts our community. Like, yeah. he uplifts women, he uplifts black yeah. women. He doesn't talk down Definitely. to the community in the mix Definitely. of music. I agree. Which a lot of people do in hip hop. In pop. Like, yeah. they, they use talking down to areas in our community to raise their music up, to broadcast it to a white audience. And he's been able to have an audience um, of different races without he's he's digestible in a way harmonically lyrically yeah and he's still raising us up he's not talking yeah. shit. he talks real but yeah. he's not bashing us in i mean he really just talks about his experience you know which yeah. even him i mean it's a it's a different experience you know it's a it's a mixed experience like yours you know yeah. not the same as yours but similar to yours so it's similar and he's from know. canada Exactly, but a it's still world. a story, you know. So it's still a story. I want to be from Canada so. half the time. I love Canada. So I went to Toronto, I think, when I was like 12 or 13. So mm -hmm. that was one of the best trips of my life. Like, I really love Canada. I really remember their ketchup. They have yes. really sweet ketchup, but it's like Heinz brands, you know, same bottle, but they have to use different tomatoes, you know, because yep. it just tastes so different. Like, my dad literally bought two of the like value size. Well, America's in like all of our products because we don't care about our people this in many ways <laughs> totally different subject but like we're like whatever this is true we don't have to have regulations on our food we can you true. know we can just eat crap so 
Yes. When you were creating this and when you were releasing it, like, and I know a lot of this because me and you talk every day almost, but yeah. did you ever think like, let me not release this. Let me, like, I know you oh my goodness. for a single beforehand. <clears throat> like, what was the thought process? And then what has the reaction been to the full, like, to both singles? Because well, they're very different honestly, than the single you put out, the first single, which is yeah. about race in America and you. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the, I've been trying to put out a project now for about, I would say a year like a year and a half, it feels like. So, and honestly, I've always been doing music and I've always wanted to have like, you know, my first record, who doesn't want to have that? That's just the start, you know, to every artist's career. And um, when I moved to Nashville, which was three years ago, obviously I took a turn and focused on writing more so for other people, you know, so that, again, that project got pushed back, you know, but I was fine because I wasn't dying to release anything. I didn't feel connected to music enough to like any original music I had to even release it, you know, so I had to take the time to just become a good writer first, you know, and after doing that, you know, I had written, you know, a mixtape that, you know, my first single Rewind was off of. Um, Vacation was originally written for that mixtape. Um, Company was written for that mixtape. And that was called Nine, you know, so that project never came out in its entirety just because of honestly sitting on it for too long you know and like you know moving on to better songs that i knew were better and i'm just like which is this mixtape you know this summer tape that i'm putting out now and it's just like i i, I just wanted to roll with what was going to be the best product for the first release you know so uh -huh. again it's on it's on track i'm finally getting ready to release it then COVID hits you know so then it's like okay a lot of the things that I plan to do with graphics, a lot of the things that I plan to do with promo, just a lot of things, a lot of shows, you know, it's just on pause, you know, and yeah. like that got me down at first, you know, so really I just, it was kind of up in the air, you know, I didn't even know if it was happening, honestly. So that was like March, you know, April, and then, you know, come like May, June, obviously you wouldn't know it was released. So like the race protests, the race riots are going on at that time, you know, so even during that, literally summer tape is not on my mind you know yeah. and it's just like i don't see it coming out right now because like it's just so tense right now and i don't feel right promoting something that is like happy uh -huh. in a time that is just so bad you know so then i put out you wouldn't know which was you know written literally that week you know it was a very uh -huh. live release you know and then I, I meditated on it like like i said i talked to my agent you know and she's just like people you know are gonna eventually need this you know and mm -hmm. want something else you know besides what's on the news you know what's on twitter you know what is real you know people do still need an escape you know we mm -hmm. we all find our ways to escape and a lot of people's is music you know so yeah. it's like what do they want to listen to i don't know you try to guess you know but so it was a very like up and down process mm -hmm. you know and it still is very stressful you know <laughs> but i it's like i'm really defying the odds and i think I'm proud of myself regardless at the end of the day because I know the music's bomb is yes. You know, and like, yes. I know everything else is just like, you know what, let that be that, you know, and let the music speak for itself, you know, and like, it's gonna find who it's gonna find. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. And guess what? If it doesn't go crazy, pop off, you're, you already have stuff in the can for your next release, you know, that's amazing. And you're making stuff literally live in the moment. That's amazing, you know, like I'm writing some of the best songs of my life right now you know which is, is so exciting and it just i really am just in a happy place ready to roll out this record you know ready to keep going but um this has definitely been a, a work in progress for about a year so yeah. definitely ready I, to give birth i'm to ready it. for people to hear it and i think that what inspires me about you is that you we're, you're in we're in nashville i'm not in it right now but we both live in nashville and yeah you're going against a system that is not built for us and for mm -hmm. our type of music. Even if like when I'm writing in country or if I'm writing in pop and writing in R and B, mm -hmm. it's not built for us in Nashville. Like we're yeah. people are kind of creating that scene. You but, have to, honestly, what I've learned is like, it's not even being in the system. Like I tried to be in the system, Yeah. you know, it's like having to literally build your own, you know, in a yeah. very kind of isolated way in Nashville, which is like, I'm not going to say it's horrible because like, I think sometimes just the best art is created, you know, in a vacuum, you know, where there are no other factors, you know, affecting it. And it's just developing 
in a place that music is being created and obviously you're inspired, you know, but like, that's just kind of been my experience, you know, so it kind of does feel like I'm living in Alaska, creating a project and releasing it right now, because there is no community, really. There you know, I'm not. supporting my peers and stuff online, you know, and like supporting their music. Love, I love seeing what they're doing, you know, but like, it really does feel like I'm in like Minnesota, you know, creating a project and releasing it from quarantine, you know, yes. so it's been a de it's been an interesting experience, but well, stressful. Going against yeah. this Drake. <laughs> I'm like, when I, we wrote it, I had like the, I had these ideas of like, because though I'm a co-writer, I'm very much, I love you as an artist and I want yep. as many people to see you as an artist and as my friend yep. and as that. So I was like, I was bummed at first. I'm like, I'm in California. Like, what can I do in California? Yeah. Because that's where I'm quarantining. Mm -hmm. And I'm not like with you and we're not in the studio and we're not jamming but then i look back at like our videos and i'm like oh i can yeah. send you these and we can show people yeah. what the energy was like and exactly. we do have a small community and the people that we that, that you work with and that i work with like they are supportive people even though we're all in like different places and yeah. most of us haven't seen each other because mm -hmm. it is it's a different world. It's a different yeah. world to release music. It's a different world. It's a different world. But also world, people so. are really on their But every day it's like, it's alone. just a new experience, you know, but it's also the possibilities are endless and like anything can happen, you know? So it's just like every day you got to get up and you're just like, okay, you know, who am I going to share my music with today? What strangers am I going to reach today? And how am I going to reach them? You well, know, because that's like what it's about right now is just connecting over the internet, you yes. know? Yes, the blessing of this, of all of this, is people are very in tune to social media and their phones and things. People are, because they're wanting to feel things because mm -hmm. they're not getting that human interaction. So yeah. I- Wanting to feel things and also wanting to, wanting to be seen too. Yes, <laughs> wanting to be seen. So I'm like, hey, yeah. anyway, just go follow John because um, <laughs> if you want to feel good and you also want some truth because like, yeah. I always go, you know, my, you know, I love Amanda Seals. You know, I love her. Yeah. But I always go, she's not as digestible, but I'm like, John will speak some truth to you. And you'll like watch his stories and you'll like be like, yeah, we're doing music. And then there'll be like a line like, you guys at these parties. I see you. Literally. And then be like, go bump drink. Like, yeah, literally. Like, you go in. Like, in the I try bit. to keep a good balance, you know? <laughs> I try to not overwhelm people, you know, with the truth, but like just sprinkle little, little bits, you know? So, yeah. yeah. And that is, that's why I love you. That's yeah. why I love you. I mean, I miss you dearly. I love you too. I truly miss you dearly. But yeah. I'll be back eventually yes you know, but or i'll be down there or you'll be here so we'll I see mean, just what happens first i kind of feel like we're both gonna end up here but mm -hmm. i mean i mean definitely timeline it's gonna happen. Isn't, isn't told yet I'm what is a timeline in 2020 you there know that's no, the thing ooh. there is no such thing that is that is a line what is a yeah. timeline what is it yeah. i yeah. think that is what 2020 has taught me in music Mm -hmm. is how much can be done and how much can be grown by authenticity and by yeah. showing up. And that mm -hmm. is with everything. And I think that is yeah. what you are doing with this record is you yeah. have shown up. You have shown up as yourself. Yeah. You have shown up in the midst of people trying to silence you. Yeah. You have just, you have created something and you're like, you know what? There's a lot of shit going on, but I'm going to still do me. Yeah. And I, yeah. and I think that's beautiful. And I think Thank that's you. beautiful. And I, I'm happy for other artists that are doing it, like Brittany Spencer, who's on here. Like, she released some yeah. stuff. And uh, Mickey Guyton. And people are being yeah. their authentic selves. And it is growing not only their audience, but it is making It's growing feel, us. It's, yes. It's growing us. It's growing yeah. us. We are being... We, Stretched. Yes. It's the season of stretching and it's just kind of like, where do you land, you know, and what are you going to do with it? You know, do you do you lay down and give up, you know, because I feel like people who are just pausing, you know, some people are just not creating records because normally they wouldn't be writing right now, you know, and yeah. that's, that's just the thing. But people that just kind of gave up because it got hard. It's like when stuff resumes, you know, it's a whole new normal, you know, and you're kind of just going to be behind. So yeah. just personally, I, I, I just wanted to keep going wanted to keep going what i love about it is you inspire me because i was out here and i was and you know we both don't love writing on zoom both yeah. like i'm not a big zoom writer i also have none of my instruments here i came here for 14 days and i've been here yeah. for four months 
So <laughs> crazy. Um, it's a little crazy, but I was like, okay, let me get a mic here. Let me get some more equipment here so that I can send vocals to you and then you can send them to somebody else and we can still create. Because I'm like, why am I holding myself back from yeah. the stuff that I'm still writing? Because I'm still creating. Why do I have to wait till next year or fourth quarter or first quarter to release music that I can just put out now? Yeah. And why do you have to hold? And that is something I have learned from you by watching just like why why limit why limit yeah. the truth that we are speaking like why do our songs have to wait a year yeah. we don't right now yeah like full projects understand but like when we create some stuff sometimes it's just needed in the world immediately yeah like you did with you wouldn't know yeah and i or like avenue beat did with Fuck yeah. Money. I was yeah. like, what on time writing for just honestly on time moments you know mm -hmm. like that is just it's just art it's like living art you know mm -hmm. so and that's the best when it can just go out and it's still like i hadn't even processed that song yet you know yeah so like <laughs> literally like honestly i don't remember writing it you know like because yeah. i just cried so much you know and yeah. there's still times when i listen to it and it just gets to that pre-chorus and like you know like i'm getting a little choked up about it now but like you know i just want to hide from the lights and just you know, honestly, all those feelings that I felt, you know, and just a culmination of all the feelings that I've just felt in my own black experience, you know, and just, mm -hmm. um, I still get chills, you know, listening to it. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I got a call. Oh, it's okay. We're back. Well, well what I want to know, yeah, and I'm not going to keep you forever, but I want to know, because I think there's a lot of people that are black, that are wanting to release music that are that are apprehensive at this time. I think there's a lot of people also doing a lot of things performatively. So I want to know what your advice is to people in the creative community that are black, are women, are queer, any of that, and they're feeling apprehension to release the music right now because they're like, oh, is it distasteful? Like, like distractions. Like, mm -hmm. what is your advice to people? to stay true to their art, to their artistry. You know. just have to stay true to your artistry, you know? And that's what I've realized. It's like, I am now just doing things for me, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? And it's, um, it's weird, you know, because I am just such a natural people pleaser, you know? Yeah. And over the past, I would say I've just gone through a very, um, extreme spiritual growth, you know, personal growth, uh -huh. you know, in the past three years, you know, so yep. through that, I've had to unlearn a lot of that, because that uh -huh. was just my natural being was just being a people pleaser. And I think being an entertainer, it's just your natural, you know, it's just where you're at, you're always trying to please people, you know, uh -huh. you're, that is your job, you know, to get in front of people, make them smile, make them love you, and make them pay you you know, as an entertainer. So, but I mean, entertainer and artists don't necessarily always go hand in hand. And I think that's yeah. important, to know, you know, because the artist does come first, you know, and I think there are entertainers that are just singers, you know, and it's like, that's a different thing, you know, uh -huh. but like, as the artist, as the creator, you got to know that it's, it's just for you first, yes. you know, and then it goes out into the world and it's going to be whatever it's going to be for everyone because art is just subjective you know, uh -huh. and music is subjective. So people are gonna make whatever they want with it. You can't control it. And that is something that I still battle to this day and will probably be a lifetime battle, uh -huh. you know, but I see it, you know, and I, I like actively fight it, you know, because uh -huh. it, it's unhealthy. So I'm just doing things for me. And I would say to all creators, like in that moment, if you feel like this is what I needed, you know, and like this, this feels good to me, you know, and if you, you've made it sound good, you know, you mixed it, you know, like put it out, you know, you know, and even mm -hmm. when it comes to just, just whatever, just put it out, you know, if yeah. it feels good to you. So, because you're just, you're telling your story, you know, and there's a, there's a time and place for a hit, you know, and there's a time and place for things to align and a viral moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, if you're doing your thing, trust me, it's just, it's probably going to happen for you, you know, if mm -hmm. you keep going, mm -hmm. but just know that that's like a very small <laughs> blip on the t on the timeline of just you and your creative being and all you're going to do in your life mm -hmm. you know so just do just do and you never know what's going to happen i just talked to somebody about that the other day she hit me up and she just 
asked about streaming and like what I, you know, do to get my streams, you know, and like that she's releasing music and just can't get listeners, you know, and I'm just like, honestly, people ask me that often lately and the answer, and I sound like a douche when I say it, but it's like, I just, two of my biggest songs are just my biggest songs because they just went and connected with people. And those two, honestly, I, I, those, I expected the least out of those two releases, which is how do you sleep or rewind, you know, yeah. as opposed to anything else I've released so far. You know, so it's like, you just got to release it, you know? Yeah. You know, it's just you like, you just got to do outcome. it. Yeah. yeah. I get that. You just got to do it. And like, honestly, like, I just, I don't practice high expectations too. You know, like I do have goals, you know, when it comes to releasing music and just as an artist and for myself, you know, I do have goals and I know like where I want to be long-term and I just know where I'm going to be long-term, mm -hmm. you know, like, I know I'm going to be a world artist. I know I'm going to have a huge platform. I know I'm going to affect a lot of people. And I know I want to be around for a very long time. You yeah. know, so when I'm like, you know, going through my journey and I'm like, man, I wish I wish I made it tomorrow, though. You know, like, I wish my moment was here, you know? And like, of course, naturally, you just have times where you're, you're going to feel that way, you know? But also, I'm like, well, if I do want to want to be around for a very long if, if I want what I say I want, then I know that there's a balance to things. And I know that there is a a very specific pathway for me, you know, and it's just, I, I find peace in that, you know, and it just, it just causes me to keep making and keep going. And then you're just surprised because the next day you make something more beautiful, you know, and then the next day something else happens. It's just like, how did this even, I thought I was at my peak, you know, and then you reach another peak and that's just, that's just the journey, you know? Well, I'll say this as, as a songwriter and as uh, an artist and as a former background singer, I left LA and I left pop. And I've told you this, I've left pop, I left R&B. I was like, I'm gonna do just full on country. Yeah. And then I met you and it all came r rolling back. Cause my love, I love country music. I grew up on it, but my my gift I feel is is pop and melodies and R&B and hooks. Like that's naturally like in my flow. Yeah. And so I was pushing against that. And so when we wrote this song on my second anniversary of Nashville, I feel and I just talked to Sarah about this. I'm like, I feel like it brought me back full circle to what I was hiding from, which was mm. like, I'm not going to release this. I'm just going to just, just gonna do country. And I'm pushing up against a wall that's like mm -hmm. not moving. I'm writing songs that aren't getting released. I'm writing with people mm -hmm. that are like shelving things. Yeah. And I'm like, why did I leave LA and hide myself? All for a reason. It's all a journey. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. truly believe it was partly to meet you and some other of my co-writers that brought me back to what, not only what I'm good at, but what I'm mm -hmm. confident in and what naturally flows through me as yeah. a writer, which then yeah. allows me to be full on with my creative self as an artist, instead of trying to fit into a box that I thought was marketable. I'm like, I could just release stuff in this box and it will find its place. So I thank you for that and for allowing me into your world to create and find it not even find the piece of me but allow that piece of me to grow again that i had like stopped watering completely and been like no nope. i'm just gonna completely just create music that is not me which yeah. sometimes you got to do to pay the bills but yeah it's not what i'm gonna do to be happy or to thrive well i think the thing is it's like sometimes we just get so caught up in the idea of like what is success to us mm -hmm. you know but like what we're actually supposed to be doing and just what is us, you know, like we're just not nurturing that and it's just starving, mm -hmm. you know, while this other, this other us, this other idea of what we think we are is, it's just trying so hard, you know, over here and just trying to like, and while you're just here and it's just like, if you would just nurture me, you know, if you yeah. would just be true to you, you know, and just do some t searching to find what that is, you know, we could flourish, you know, and yes. I just, that, that is my whole motto. You know, it's just like, be true to you, you know, nurture and I, you and, I and feel the, like, the real you and the truth in you, you know, and, and, and do that because that's you. I'm so that's happy you. that you have taught me that even when I thought I knew it, I was like, oh, this journey brought me to this place and like you have wisdom and I'm like, ah, it also shows like you can learn from anybody, like don't discount yeah. people's age or their experience or life because I agree. Like, I've done a lot. I've toured. I've done things that people would think would hold a different value than this person's value. But I'm like, 
the most time I learn from people that are like just hustling out there. Cause I'm like, yeah. sometimes you think you know more than you do. And I'm like, I don't know. I bought, I was told when I moved. And you Nashville, can't, you, you literally can't know certain things without experiences. You know, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> you, you can't. And like, there's, there's certain things that I can't, you know, I heard this on a podcast the other day with Amanda Seals, you know, and she was like, and I got out of college and told everybody I was going to be this person who I am today, you know, and they were just at first, they're just like, okay, you know, but like, no, you got to live life first too, you know, like there's certain things I just can't speak to, you yeah. know, and with time, like, you know, you just, you, you do learn those things and we just we are constantly evolving beings too. Yeah. So when I'm, when I'm talking about that speaking to self truth and nurturing, like mm -hmm. just who you are and that's just when you're going to be your best you, mm -hmm. that's a constant, that's, that's just soul searching every day. Every you know, day. because we we're with our partners, you know, and we realize that, you know, like my boyfriend, it's like he changes, you know, and I and I know he changes all the time. But we we forget that, like, we're changing, too, you know, mm -hmm. and like we have needs and like we need to be in tune with ourselves, you know, just more. And I hope that like this time and like this isolation with people is just causing them to be in tune with themselves more. You know, I hope that, too. And I think yeah. I am seeing that. I think I'm seeing that as a collective. I think I'm seeing that with our little community. That yeah, we have. I've seen people just a lot of soul searching. A, a lot, lot of soul, and it's what we needed. It's what we needed. So, and, and it's a constant thing. It's gonna create more music. I think it's gonna create more conversations. I mean, I know I'm personally feel more in tune with who I am as a as a human and as a woman and as a biracial woman in this world, and also yeah. as a songwriter and artist. Like this time, and maybe also partly because I stepped away from Nashville. I walked. I went out and I literally started. distanced. I yeah. literally distanced and I can see things yeah. so clearly and it's mm -hmm. had me a line. And like I've said, I've turned down some, some singing jobs and I've turned down some rights from people that I'm like, you're racist and I'm not going to yeah. create with you. And that's okay. Like, yeah. I know where my value is. I know who you should create with. I know, and I know who I am. And I think that this moment allowed me the, the quiet. Mm-hmm to hear the noise that needed to be the heard. Stillness, yeah. The stillness, the stillness. The thing so, that we hate, you know, the, the, the reason why we try to be so active and fill our schedules because we hate stillness. Mm -hmm. And we think, we think in the stillness though that we're being slow, you mm -hmm. know, and that things aren't moving, you know, but we, we need to realize that first things need to move within us before they can move on yep. the outside. And that's just it, so. It. And it's, I'm like, I'm going through that daily still, you know, and it's mm -hmm. just like, again, it's a constant thing. It's a constant thing, so. Well, I will say, I am I am personally excited to create create more with you and to see what what's next. There's no yes. timeline in what's next, but yeah. to see what. The future is wide open. The future is wide open. And, and it's ours, and it's ours to take. So and anybody you know, who's on here, it's yours to take. Daily, yeah. people like, I'm like, I'm like president of your fan club. I, I love it. I love it. And I just honestly, <laughs> soon I will be able to hire you. And I just will. I know. I'll be like, I'm just president. You'll be resident co-writer and, and fan club, just officiate. <laughs> I'm just like, people are like, what do you listen to? I'm like, John Tucker. I'm like, he's my brother. <laughs> my friend. Co-writer. Yes. Like, if you yes. guys look at my feed, there's like half the photos are of you. Right here. <laughs> and like in the last 10 posts. But. It's because I think also we need to support each other and we need to support publicly. Like me supporting support each other, how we would support me. my main example, which is who I love, Lizzo. You know, yeah. like however you support your big people, you know, support your small. That's just it. We're I'm literally at the end of the day all the same. Like, and we all got the same issues just on different scales. Just on different scales, <laughs> different visibility. Just on different That's scales true. and more money equals more problems. If you uh, knew, if you knew, <sighs> if you knew, you if know, you knew. so it's not, it's just the more and more I just real, it's just not always great at the top, you know, no. so, and no. like, honestly, the journey is, and everyone says it at the end. So it's like, I try to make myself realize that every day that the journey is the best thing. And mm -hmm. these are really like the highs, you know. So these well, are some of the Well, this is also moments. when, um, when you build the community and the people that will keep it real with you when you're at the top. Yeah. Like, because at the top you hear a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And I know this from friends who have have made it high and are, and are, 
big and they say it's a lot noisier. It's a lot harder to hear the truth when yeah. you have the money and the fame and you have people depending on you on a different level to mm -hmm. keep those values in line. But if you, if you start your career with them and you have those deep ingrained with you, it's easier to keep foundation. Them. Yeah, foundation. you have to build that foundation. And I think setting a standard, not only for the people around you and boundaries for the people around you, but setting a standard and boundaries just for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and like and what you're willing to take, what you're willing to do. Um, that's yeah. just something that's been very important to me. And um, I've conducted business moves and, and a lot of stuff by that, you know, mm -hmm. recently, you know, that and it's, it's also realizing that that doesn't mean that that doesn't come with repercussion, you it know. Does. And realizing that just in life to do the right thing, to mm -hmm. stand by the truth, it, it doesn't it doesn't promise you rainbows because guess what? The norm is just not that. You no. know? And it's a constant realization that when you are really walking in realness and truth, expect people to push up against you first and like to push yeah. back. And it seems like a backwards thing because in in a you know, great society, a perfect society, we would push back against a lie. You know, yeah. but people push against the truth because the truth sets people free and people like being in their comfort zones mm -hmm. and people like being honestly shackled <laughs> mentally. Yeah. Um, so because people are afraid of growth, because with growth comes change and uncomfortability. Well, so <laughs> down that anthem. So what did you say? The line, they were in shock because I have never turned down an anthem. That is like my hustle, the national anthem. Yeah. But I was like, I can't speak what I've been speaking on here and with my job yeah. talks and my music and my truth, and then go right around and do that, which goes against everything. I'm like, that money's not worth it. The value system's not yeah. worth it right now. I'm not saying I'll never sing an anthem again. I'm saying mm -hmm. America isn't free. So I'm not gonna sing about us being free right now. Yeah. But I'll sing the black There's, a, there's a time and season for everything. You yes. know, this is just, but it was in my it was opinion, not the season. Yeah, but it, I felt free. And I, I know I text you and I text a few other people right after and I was like, Oh, I just turned down money, folks. Ooh. Yeah. I was like, it's a pandemic and I turned down money, but I feel clear and I feel aligned. And I feel like yeah. they know what I'm about now. And yeah. when they come back, I said I would sing the Black National Anthem. When they come back, they know what my values is and they won't ask me to do something against it and they'll respect me. And we all yeah. need to be respected. And money and all those things is not worth being disrespected. Because all of yeah. it will come. The universe and everything wants us to grow and be better. So yeah. if you're aligned. There's a balance to it all. If yeah. you just you're realize it. Cool. If you just you realize like we're all in a circle, like yep. the Lion King said. Like so. the <laughs> Oh, the Lion Literally. King is so wise. Oh. It's all a circle. You know, I was talking to my boyfriend about that last week. It's like, you know, rather than me believing in a heaven or hell, I mean, I find more just actual like factual, you know, from looking outside and just seeing like the grass and seeing the trees, yeah. you know, and seeing like we literally are, are made from stardust and like we go back yeah. into the ground and we become other things. And like, there is just a circle and a balance to everything, you know, there is. and in the way that we conduct ourselves here too, you know, there is just cause and effect to everything, you know, so, mm -hmm. and I think if we just all start realizing that's, that goes bigger than just even on a personal level, that's just the ecosystem of the world and how we all, you know, mm -hmm. co cohabitate here. You know, so we just got to do better for people. We got to do better for everyone, you know, and it'll it'll just start being better. It'll so. start being better. And I think we're just we're trying to get there. You know, that's what we're talking about. That's the that's the word on the street. You know, that is how can we be better? You know, how do we do better? And it's like it's uncomfortable and it looks weird and no one really knows the right way. And, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. most I'm not gonna say everyone. But most people are trying right now. And that's mm -hmm. all we can ask. So. Well, I appreciate you for for always vibrating high, even in the midst of chaos. Trying to, not yeah, always. Yeah. I mean, you're not always, always. Some days, but you're always like, striving to be. You there. always are striving yeah. to vibrate high. Yes, yeah. and you're always honest. Yeah, and that is, you're an honest human being, and yeah. for putting. I out wear it on my sleeves. I can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> I and I want it. everybody on here or people that we listen or watch or hear it on the podcast to to follow you and to listen to Go not stream only our Drake. Song, Drake on Spotify to that multiple times. But you know, when yes. the whole EP comes out, bump the whole thing. Cause it's yeah. just 
from top it's to coming top. out this month. I don't have an exact date, but it's coming, and I'm so excited. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be so good. I'm, <laughs> I'm so, so excited, excited truly, truly. I'm so excited for people to hear it. Yes, I feel very lucky that I get to bump it in my own. Yes, world. me and, and my that baby. you're a part of it. Yes, yes, yes. I feel happy to be it's gonna a part be amazing. of it. And, I, and like I say, I wear this shirt, Drake. And um, yes. it makes me think of you. I should have the back say John or like Tucker. Love you guys. Love you. Love you, girl. Everybody. And I can't wait to see you soon. Alrighty. All right. Bye. Talk soon. Bye. Talk to you soon. Love you.